number one thing that I have learned in my cloud career is that if you can make a company money or you can save a company money, you will see success. All right, I want to talk about something that I feel like a lot of companies don't take advantage of. And that if you, you know, you're a cloud engineer, maybe you're new to the team, maybe you're experienced, whatever it is, but you bring like this to the table, you're like, hey, boss, I think I know a way to save 90% on our VM usage, costs, spend on our pay as you go subscription. They're going to be like, what? Instant raise, instant um, promotion. Huh. But anyway, so. We're going to talk today about something called Azure, Azure Spot VMs. This is so tiny. Okay, so bear with me because uh, I'm not that good at making these diagrams, but we're going to work through this. So the way this works is usually Azure. Let's call this, uh, we'll put a little text up here. Let's say this is East US, right? And let's say this is the availability of DSAs, I forgot what that, I was literally just working with this type of image. I think it's like DSA underscore V5. It's a, it's a skew that we have. And let's say this is in zone one. Okay. So yeah, so let's say this is the location, right? And in here we have a bunch of VMs, right? And let's say that each one of these VMs costs... 0 0.9999 per hour. Okay. So let's just say that, right? And we'll just add a couple more VMs in here. And here we're just trying to simulate. Come on. Oh, come on. I cannot. <laughs> I'm trying to get this to duplicate. There we go. There. Perfect. There. Okay. Obviously, there will be many, many more VMs per, per zone, per, you know, region and all that kind of stuff. But the idea is that Azure has these VMs available, right? And then you might be using two VMs. Another customer might be using like 15 VMs and whatever. And those are being sold to you to use at this price here, too. But let's say that, uh, let's say right now it is um, 4 p.m., right? 4 p.m., this is what it looks like. And... Uh, we're going to select a couple of these. We're going to actually do a little rectangle here. And let's say that these VMs here are being used at that price. So these are locked in at that price. But Azure has these VMs here at the bottom that are not being used, right? But they're in a data center. They can be used. It's just there are no workloads being deployed to them. So what they say is, okay, hey, even if... What we have to do is to offer these at a discounted price to get people to deploy to them. Let's do that because if not, they're just going to be sitting there, right? So that means that they can sell these. At, I don't know why this is so tiny. But let's just say they sell these at 0, 0.0. What's that? 99? Let's just say they, they, sell, uh, they sell these at per hour. 0 0.2 per hour, right? So you can see and you can think that as someone who wants to deploy to Azure on VM, wow, that's like a significant, significant saving there, right? And the reality is that you can save up to, I think, like 90% of uh, like these costs uh, from what I've been perusing because I'm right now building a project that is essentially architected to be deployed reliably on Azure Spot VMs, but that'll be another video. But I have seen anywhere from like 50% savings, to like 90% savings there. So a lot of potential, right? But the thing is there are some pros here and there are some cons, but I think the cons are more so opportunities for you to kind of finesse here, finesse in a way where like you can build something that actually works pretty well. Now, the reality is that there are just some workloads that can't work here, right? Some things that are highly critical, need to be running 24 seven. You're just, there's just no way that you can architect that to work in this type of uh, workload, right? But I'm pretty sure there is something that you can use 
or you can architect to work well here. So essentially, we were just looking for stateless workloads, right? But let's talk a little bit first about these pros and these cons. So pros. We'll do this all caps. Pros. And let's zoom in a little. Pros are, of course, that we will get pretty big savings. Say cheap, cheap savings, savings, right? Uh, another pro is that most, if yeah, I would say most SKUs, uh, uh, SKUs, sizes, regions have these, right? So let's say you have like, um, you know, a specific SKU deployed with like an Ubuntu image and like a certain configuration of disks and networking, all that kind of stuff in like central Canada or you or East us or something like that. Right. Most likely that same configuration will be allowed for in like a spot VM, uh, except for B except for B SKUs, Right. So keep that in mind. And, uh, additionally, oh, we can put this in here. Pros. Oh, and now we have this extra space in here and I don't like it. Okay. Pros. There we go. Okay. Pros. Most SKUs, sizes, and regions are available here for us. And what else? I, let's keep those to the pros. For, all right. And then I'm going to just write the cons over here. And the cons are, well, first things first, availability, right? Now... You probably experienced this. Well, I won't say probably, but you at some point have experienced in Azure, you're like you're deploying something and it says something like, oh, that is not available in this region. T try another region. I think you might run into that a little bit more often when trying to find where to deploy your spot VM to, just because as you can see here, right? Obviously, if like a customer here needs a, a additional capacity or any workload needs additional capacity, they're just going to take from the spot VM availability and put that over into the capacity pool here too. So you have just overall less resources, less VMs in that uh, pool to like be a spot VM. So you're going to have to kind of deal with that availability issue. And then on top of that, you will also have to deal with evictions, which just like, you know, an eviction in any kind of capacity or any other type of thing, you'll get kicked off. And I think, like, you know, you'll have your workload running and then suddenly, I think it's like 30 seconds, <laughs> um, potentially, potentially more notice, but I think up until 30 seconds or at the bare minimum, 30 seconds of notice that they'll send you an email like, hey, you're going to get evicted from this VM. You have 30 seconds to do something, right? <laughs> Which it might might be scary. And again, I, like I mentioned, obviously, things that need to run 24-7 make no sense having on these types of workloads. But you can kind of work around that, right? So just keep that in mind. Again, if, this, if you're running something on here and then suddenly you have to you get kicked off because this needs to return back to this pool, then that's just going to happen, right? So anyway, now, like I mentioned, yes, these are cons, but at the same time, I think these are opportunities. So the cool thing about both of these actually is that there are kind of ways to like work around them. So you're going to have to build some helper tools. You're going to have to like code some stuff up, but um, if you're a cloud engineer or some kind of ops person, you most likely have experience building these types of tools, but there are APIs, AP, APIs and CLI commands that you can use to query and get an idea for what is available in which region, right? So you can go ahead and build and, and commands, build a helper tool that finds that for you, right? So let's say that your company primarily works in four different regions, then potentially you would build some kind of CLI tool, some kind of, it could be an, your own API, like whatever fits best for the type of workloads and the type of work that you have that goes and, you know, queries those regions and checks for what's available for spot, you know, spot VMs, depending on like the configuration and everything that you want. And then that could return a list 
you're constantly refreshing that list. Maybe it's part of like your CI CD pipeline. You first go check where it's available, then it gets deployed to that. And you can do some cool things here too, because you can almost kind of outline like a, like an algorithm, right? So, because you may end up having a list of regions that have this type of availability, like you may end up having like, so let's say you have four regions that you want to work with. Let's say out of four, you have zone one in region one, and then you have zone two in region two that have availability. Well, you can almost establish like an algorithm that finds the best price to eviction rate ratio, right? So ideally you want to balance between finding the ones that have like a low or a lower, I will say not the absolute lowest, but like a lower, well, I guess you could also, yeah, price like the, the lowest eviction pay rate in terms of the price that it'll actually cost you. Right. Cause you, you'll see like eviction rates. Like um, I've seen like some that say like 5% or five to 10%, 10 to 15% or some will say 20 plus percent. And then obviously the cost will be higher for the ones that get evicted more usually. And then for the ones that get uh, evicted like less often, the price goes lower up until the ones that get, or I guess it goes higher up until the like absolute lowest eviction rate. Well, just a little bit of a higher cost there too, usually. But what you can do is you build this helper tool. It says like, okay, hey, I found these regions. I found these zones that have availability. In my opinion, this one is the best one you should uh, go and deploy to based off it having like this ratio, right? And I think that's, you know, a cool project, but also something that will help you get a more bang for your buck in my opinion, right? So you can build that tool out there, right? And then for the eviction thing, like handling this, what you can, or what you would want to absolutely do is figure out ways to uh, keep your apps stateless, right? So stateless is the key here key here right so obviously there are workloads that because of their nature they just fit well here like things that are like batch processing you have a list of things you got through the list up until five and then it got kicked off and then you can just resume that somewhere else uh but maybe you can also save your state to like a storage uh think of it like you know a video game where you're like paranoid that your console is going to die like think of it think of it this way i like to think of it this way i have a psp you can kind of see it. It's back there. It's on top of that book there, which is Flint Python, which is an excellent book. But you, the battery is not the best, right? So right now I'm playing GTA. I'm playing um, Liberty City Stories. And the only way that I can save the game is like now we have all auto save all the time and everything like that, right? But back then you just have to go to a location to save, right? So before I go and kick off my next mission, I always thinking like should i go save first before i go to the mission or should i accomplish a mission and then go save think of it like that same way for like your workloads like how are you saving state and ideally you would save it in a way where it could be easily resumed or picked up by another machine right uh, so that's like storage or a queue or something like that that's the key to think for your workloads and on top of this you also have things that you can take advantage of like i think it's called like mixed spot uh, where you can have a, uh, let's call this this way. You have a virtual machine scale set. And it, just like any kind of virtual machine scale set where you have just multiple VMs and uh, you can set the minimum, maximum, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and here you have the option to have a spot, I think it's called spot mixed. Spot mixed, where you can have some are spot VMs and some are just normal VMs. And then you instead of having like five on the normal pricing, you'll have like, four and then you have one uh on spot vm and you're already saving some money there too it's like it's not you have to do absolutely everything on there but it's like you can architect ways to start introducing these things and as you save like five percent here five percent there five percent there like it adds up right and then you can also have um what kind of i think they're called stand standby pools which essentially you're having instances that are uh readily available but on spot vm pricing so, which I think is super cool. Anyway, just some ideas for you to go and implement and save your workloads some money. And the number one thing about work and getting promotions and like landing roles is being able to save money and make money. <laughs> okay. So keep that in mind. Number one thing that I have learned in my cloud career is that if you can make a company money or you can save a company money, 
you will see success. All right, that's it for this video.